Hi, I'm Alexa, and in this video, I'm going to explain how I got into computer science and programming in high school. I'm a senior in high school currently, which means my high school journey is coming to an end. As you can see, I will be attending the Georgia Institute of Technology for college, and I will be majoring in computer science. So. I realized that on YouTube, there's not a lot of videos out there explaining how to get into programming in high school, so I thought I'd make one. Hopefully you guys enjoy this, find it a bit helpful. Let's get started. Just a disclaimer, there's many paths you can take to find a passion for programming or pursue a degree or career in computer science, and don't use this video as a checklist. Don't do all these things that I did in the order I did, or at all. The important thing is to do what you love. Do what actually interests you. Um, maybe you try a few things from this list and you don't like some of them. Maybe you do like some of them, and that's great. But you want to make sure you're doing things that you love. Don't just do something because someone told you to do it, or to get into a certain college, or to get a certain career you'll probably end up regretting it in the long run. A brief introduction, I started coding in middle school. The first line of code I ever wrote was for an Arduino program in sixth grade. I had no idea what I was doing, but I liked the idea of, you know, coding a computer. I thought it was like hacking something, but I really got into coding during my freshman year of high school. And this was partly due to the fact that I got into a magnet high school, which focused on computer science and business as a vocation. This just meant that I was able to take more CS classes and participate in more CS extracurriculars at this school. In this video, I'll explain some classes I took, extracurriculars I participated in, some online resources I found really helpful, and an internship I was able to acquire at the end of my senior year. Let's get started with some classes. The good thing about classes is that they hold you accountable. You can find anything that a class teaches on the internet, and you can study it yourself on the internet, yes, but will you be dedicated to learn if someone isn't grading you or handing you assignments and projects to do is the real question and that's the benefit of taking classes so my high school was fortunate enough to offer a lot of computer science classes i know some high schools do not so if you're able to maybe self-study these classes or maybe go to a different high school or take these classes somewhere else that could be an option for you so in my sophomore year i was able to take AP Computer Science Principles, which is the Advanced Placement College Board class. Don't get me started on College Board, but oh my goodness, my dog is lingering. She's lurking. But I was able to take this class. This class is a very, it's an introduction to computer science. People go into this class knowing no coding at all. So if you're a true beginner, you don't even know what coding is take this class if you can. In this class, the language used was HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. This is where I really fell in love with web development. The teacher I had for this class was really hard, but in a way I do thank him for that because it really pushed us to go beyond boundaries and create some really cool projects like a to-do list. We made tic-tac-toe and brick breaker games like that. And also, you can take an exam for this class hosted by the College Board. College Board. And you can get credit for this class in college, possibly. But if you want to look into that, please just Google Advanced Placement Exams. The next computer science class I took was AP Computer Science A. And this is again another AP course advanced placement by the College Board. 
but this is the second level computer science class. So in this class, you're learning Java and object oriented programming, which is supposedly harder than just HTML, CSS and JavaScript. This class, I actually had to take over the pandemic, which was kind of hard. I had a lot of fun. I definitely like web development more than Java, but it's also good to know Java just to have another language under your belt. And the cool thing about my school, again, I think I've said this like a million times already. It's been like five minutes into the video, but we have a lot of CS classes. So I was able to take various CS electives, including web design, advanced software development, which is really cool. It's a senior level class where you create your own data structures and stuff like that. It's really preparing you for what you're going to see in college. We created binary trees, linked list, all on our own. And I also took database class, which was moving on to extracurriculars. At my school, we had a coding club, and I became the president of that club in my senior year, and I was involved as an officer throughout my other years. In this club, we hosted coding workshops for the whole district. And the cool thing about all these CS extracurriculars is that you get to meet cool people who know how to code and they probably know how to code better than you so you can learn from them and that's really what i love about meeting a community i love meeting people who are better at coding than me because i can learn from them and then better myself it's a win-win also a thing to participate in is hackathons hackathons are multi-hour event where you come together in teams to create a software related project. And again, you're meeting with a community of people, you get to talk about coding like nerds, and you get to play some fun games and stuff. And the first time I did a hackathon was in my freshman year. That was actually, wait, does it count? No, that was the only hackathon I actually participated in because I, also played high school and club soccer throughout my time in high school, which consumed a very, very large amount of my time. I'll give a link in the description to a place where you can find all these hackathons. They're hosted at schools, they're hosted by companies. You can travel the world to these places, but also sometimes they're virtual because, you know, the pandemic made everyone in that virtual mindset. So you don't even have to leave your house to participate in a hackathon nowadays. I also participated in robotics for two years. Didn't really get too involved in that just because the club was very big and felt like I wasn't really doing anything. FBLA, I participated maybe two out of the four years. Um, in my senior year for this club, I worked in a team to code a retro style game. That was interesting to say the least, but it, it had its ups and downs. I also participated in Girls Who Code, and I did this because I really love teaching code. Some people really like competing with code. I was never, I was never a competitor with code. I was, I just didn't find that interesting. So I got involved in teaching others how to code, and that's why I have this whole YouTube channel teaching you guys how to code. But moving on, I also participated in Girl Scouts, and you're probably like, what the heck does Girl Scouts have to do with coding? Well, you can make Girl Scouts about coding. And I did this by completing my Gold Award project, which the Gold Award is the highest award you can earn as a Girl Scout and requires a bunch of, has a bunch of guidelines, but it's basically you complete a project that takes 80 hours or more of your time and it has to be sustainable and beneficial to the community. So for my project, I organized and hosted my own hackathon in my town, which did not even know what the word hackathon meant. As you can see, I was helping the community bringing coding into the lives of children like a good person should do. And I actually had a lot of fun running this hackathon. It took, it was a lot of work. I had to communicate with officials, district officials, teachers. I had to get my friends to run workshops and stuff. I had to cater to an audience of like seven year olds and also an audience of 18 year olds. So it was really fun. The kids enjoyed it. They loved it. And we gave out prizes. It was really fun. Next, online resources. 
My number one online resource for programming is probably Udemy. I love taking their courses. I've taken like a bunch of their courses. I, don't, I can't even count how much. Yeah, I see it as a way to get all the content I need in one place and it's better than reading documentation, especially if the documentation is poorly written. You don't want to waste your time doing that. So I just buy the 10 to $15 Udemy course and I'm like, okay, this is a good investment instead of wasting my time reading through documentation written by a complete idiot. Anyway, if you want a free education and you don't want to spend your 10 to $15, which, come on, it's, it's not that much. It's worth it, guys. It's worth it. You can find a lot of courses on YouTube, just tutorials. Sometimes people will make playlists with YouTube courses that are like several hours long, but they may not be as thought out just because they're not directly getting paid to make them. The final resource I would recommend is documentation. I would suggest maybe if you're a beginner going through a Udemy course first or watching some YouTube tutorials first and then go to the documentation just because it can be a little confusing if the documentation is written by a complete idiot and you're a beginner and then you're going to get frustrated and then you're going to be like, oh my goodness, I hate coding, when in reality it's not even your fault, it's just the documentation is poorly written or you don't really know how to understand this specific documentation. So definitely try out the first resources first and then go to the documentation, but as you become more skilled, you'll be able to read documentation easier and it's definitely a skill you want to have in the future. Lastly, I'm going to talk about internships. Like I said, I acquired one internship in the summer of my senior year and I, I'm still working for them right now. One thing I do want to say is please do not feel pressured to get a coding internship in high school. People do not get coding internships even after college, like they're struggling to get some. And just because I am got one doesn't mean you'll get one or you won't get one or something like that. But definitely do not expect to get an internship and do not expect to get an internship at a FANG company, so Facebook, Google. I don't think they're hiring high schoolers unless it's like some special program from one of these companies, they may have that for high schoolers. How I got this internship, I received interest from my hackathon that I was hosting for my Girl Scout Gold Award. I posted this hackathon on Facebook. I was like, come on, people, get your children to join my hackathon. They'll learn how to code. They'll become rich. They'll become millionaires because they know how to code and no one else knows how to code nowadays. So basically the CEO of the internship I have now saw this and was like, wow, you can code? And I was like, yeah, I can code, kind of. And he was like, okay, do you want to interview with the developer team? And I was like, sure, why not? Like, this is an internship I'm getting as a high schooler. I might as well take it. Oh my goodness, my dog is... I do this interview I, I really, I really, I hate to say it, but I slayed that interview, honestly. It wasn't a very technical interview. It wasn't like some leet code type interview where they're asking you to, you know, program a data structure, even though your work will probably not involve data structures. But they were basically asking about my personality, how I would manage work and stuff like that. And I was able to answer those questions pretty well. I was able to hide the fact that I'm just a robot that likes to code and that I'm devoid of all happiness. I was able to hide that from them. I'm just kidding, guys. They did ask me a few technical questions that were very easy considering the experience I had before. They asked me to explain what classes are, so I was like, yes, I can do that. I took AP Computer Science A. Thank you, College Board. But yes, Ironically, I don't think I've ever used a class while working with this company. Advice I would give to someone trying to find an internship in high school is to reach out locally. Um, you may want to reach out to your library and be like, wow, your website looks horrible. Let me fix it for you for free. And 
maybe they'll be like, okay, we'll let you do that. And maybe they'll even pay you for it, which is cool. So reach out to these local businesses that are not very technology savvy or find one that is in need of developers like I did. And maybe you can get an internship there. So thank you guys for watching. If you found this video helpful, leave a like, click that subscribe button, follow me on my various social media pages that I am losing count of. I can't even keep track of how many social medias I've signed up for. Like I'm on Twitch, I'm on Discord, I'm on YouTube. Maybe I should lay off the social media so I can truly focus on one and not upload videos every eight months which is happening on my YouTube channel right now. I'm sorry for that, guys. Hope this helped you guys, and see you later. Good luck in high school, and wish me luck in college.